few pieces of plastic found to be enough to kill sea turtles. Plastic pollution is harming sea turtles. According to a study published in Scientific Reports, researchers found that ingesting just one piece of plastic could increase the chance of a sea turtle dying by 22%. The researchers found younger turtles have a higher risk of dying from plastic than adult turtles, as they tend to float in the ocean currents where most of the small lightweight plastic lies. Adult turtles, in comparison, tend to be choosier with what they eat, choosing instead to eat seagrass and crustaceans. The researchers explained that even a thin, flimsy piece of plastic could block the intestine, resulting in blockage in the long run, while harder pieces of plastic could cause internal injuries. The study also found that about half of the sea turtles on Earth have already consumed plastic. Dr. Hardesty, one of the authors of the study, said we should rethink our relationship with plastic and work to reduce turtles' exposure to plastic. More marine life stories. Global warming is killing our oceans. A new study predicts that within 15 to 20 years, human-caused deoxygenation will be felt across the world's oceans. With climate change warming sea waters, oxygen levels in the world's oceans are beginning to drop. Surface water with higher temperatures absorb less oxygen. Such surface water is also more buoyant, so oxygen is less likely to make it into deeper water. The resulting conditions are dangerous to marine ecosystems, which depend on oxygen for survival. With the threat already underway, changes in the southern Indian Ocean and parts of the Pacific and Atlantic will be felt as early as 2030. Oceans in eastern Africa, Australia and Southeast Asia, however, won't feel the impact until the next century. Worsening the effects of deoxygenation is an increase in carbon dioxide, causing oceans to be more acidic and less habitable. Researchers say carbon emissions must be reduced if we want to slow the oxygen loss, but monitoring and understanding where the oxygen levels are dipping and how it's impacting our waters is also key. Faceless fish found in the abyss Australian scientists have discovered a faceless deep-sea fish off Australia's east coast during a month-long expedition. The sampling the abyss expedition begins from Bell Bay, Tasmania and ends in Brisbane. The investigator research vessel is equipped with multi-beam sonar that can map the structure of the seafloor. The expedition surveys the abyssal level, up to 6,000 meters deep in the ocean. Sleds, dredgers, and grabbers are deployed in order to collect samples of animals and sediment. Scientists said animals in the abyss are often small and move slowly, and many of them don't have eyes or produce their own light through bioluminescence. Another catastrophe caused by climate change. Japan's coral reefs are in danger. According to a government study, rising sea temperatures have impacted the ability of Japan's biggest coral reef to recover from bleaching, resulting in only 1% of the reef being in good health. Due to rising sea temperature, the reef has suffered bleaching events in 1998, 2001, 2007, and 2016, leading to a decrease in the overall coral volume by nearly 80% in the Tsukise Lagoon. A Japanese miniature official said that the loss of rich animal life under the sea would have a grave impact on the ecosystem in the region. The lagoon is approximately 67.89 square kilometers, with only around 1.4% of its corals healthy. According to scientists, it takes at least 10 to 20 years for coral to recover from a bleaching event. Coral reefs are home to 25% of sea life, even though they only make up 1% of marine environment. The only way for the coral to recover is if sea temperatures drop and algae are able to recolonize them again. Those poor animals! Scientists are concerned by a massive shark die-off in San Francisco Bay, but are unable to get state funding to research the exact cause. 2,000 leopard sharks and hundreds of bat rays, smooth hound sharks, striped bass, and halibut have turned up dead on San Francisco Bay between February and July of this year. The culprit is suspected to be a parasite known as Myamiensis avidus, which enters the shark's nose and eats away at its brain. When the animal eventually succumbs to the parasite, it either swims aimlessly in circles or beaches itself. But scientists say only a small fraction end up on shore. Sharks aren't naturally buoyant, so the infected ones sink to the bottom of the ocean once they stop swimming. 
Leopard sharks are the most commonly spotted victims of the parasite, but it's a lesser concern for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife since the species is not endangered. Scientists fear, however, that other species are also becoming infected and dying, but just aren't washing up on shore. They also worry that the parasite could spread farther along the California coast. It might soon be a permanent game over for coral reefs. Warming waters are hurting the world's coral reefs almost five times more than they did 30 years ago. Scientists looked at bleaching data in 100 coral reefs. They found that the frequency of bleaching from warmer waters increased fivefold from once every few decades to once every six years. Bleaching occurs when the reef reacts to stressful changes in temperature, light, nutrients, and other conditions. This makes the reef eject the symbiotic algae in their tissue and turn pale white. Corals can survive and even recover, but continued bleaching eventually leads to death. According to the National Ocean Service, coral reefs are considered sessile animals, meaning they're fixed to one place. The World Wildlife Fund says they provide almost 30 billion U.S. dollars in goods and services every year. They're also important for tourism, coast protection against heavy storms, typhoons, and even tsunamis.